The feeling is euphoric. Time saved is historic. The clean is iconic. The sound is truly demonic. That's ultrasonic. Hello and welcome back to another, dare I say, pretty flipping good Trace Fellow production. My name is Luke. So, picture the scene with me. You're planning your next ride, but you forgot that on the last ride, you got caught out in the lashing rain and your bike, your bike is filthy. I mean, I know this is actually quite clean because I'm quite obsessive with my cleaning, but imagine, imagine with me. So you can clean the frame and the wheels relatively easily. So you can maybe rinse them down and, and towel them off or whatever. But when it comes to giving your drive chain, a good clean, it can be messy, it can take a while, and it's, it's probably something a lot of people put off. Um, but what if I told you it's actually really easy and it may be something you look forward to as well? So a while back, I picked myself up a Lean Mean ultrasonic cleaning machine it changed my life. That's not true, that's a lie. It didn't, it, it didn't change my life. But it did make things a hell of a lot easier when it came to kind of cleaning my drive chain, really. So let me show you what I picked up. So ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the Viver PS-30A, a fantastic looking machine, could be a real contender. So let's check out the stats body stainless steel that is some tough stuff size we're looking at a capable six liters and power 180 watts at a frequency of 40 kilohertz timing function available with an automatic heating element all at a cost of 95 pounds that is some competitive stuff so the Viva ps-38 definitely want to watch out for could really disrupt the pack this season anyway trace back to you in the studio Okay, so you've all seen my marvelous cleaning machine. Now let me show you what it's all about. So, admittedly, at the start of the video, my bike was a tad too clean for a video about cleaning bicycles. So, I've literally just got back in after a few swift laps around Richmond Park in the lashing rain during the midst of storm Storm Dennis here in the UK, truly taking my life into my own hands for this channel. So what do you want, a medal? Okay, so as I was riding around in the rain, I purposefully took some detours down some pretty horrible muddy and sandy paths around Richmond Park, just to cover my drive chain in as much crud as possible, really. And you should be able to see that my chain and my cassette are now covered in this black paste, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. It's a mixture of the chain lubricant. So in my case, it's this green finish line oil. Um, I think this is German, actually. Um, I picked it up on eBay for cheap. But regardless, the black paste is a mixture of this and whatever else has been picked up from the road and the paths that you've been riding down. So in my case, it's a hell of a lot of mud and a hell of a lot of sand as well. So the issue is this black stuff coating your drive chain effectively acts like a grinding paste and it quite quickly eats away your chain and your cassette. So if you don't clean it off, one of the main things it does, at least in my experience, is it really quickly wears away the rollers on the chain, which effectively widens the spaces between the chain links. So you can test that with this little tool here. So let me show you how it works quickly. Okay, so this is a tool and you can see it's got one and 0.75 written on it. And these are effectively levels of wear in the chain, one being greater than 0.75. However, if my chain fails the 0.75 test, 
I tend to throw it away and get a new one because this makes the cassette last much longer and chains are cheap at the end of the day. So let me show you how it works. All you do is you pop it on the chain and if the tool falls between the links, it means that the chain has failed the test and the rollers are worn. So let me show you. On my chain here, it sits proud of the chain, which means that it's not yet reached 0.75 wear. So my chain is okay. But if it was to fall down between them, it means that the rollers are worn. Quite a lot of people think that chain wear is where the chain stretches. This isn't actually true. What happens is the rollers in the chain, they wear out and they get smaller in diameter effectively, which means that this tool can then slip between the length of the chain. So there you go, that's how uh, this tool works and it shows you how to measure chain wear. So when the chain is worn out and the spaces between the rollers are effectively wider, this wears down your cassette quickly as well and the spaces between the teeth get wider also because of the increased slop in the chain. So I'll show you a picture of a new cassette here and a worn cassette and you should be able to see the spaces between the teeth are, are wider. So it was difficult to easily show how the spaces between the cassette teeth had widened, but you can see here the teeth on the worn cassette are noticeably narrower, which essentially means the spaces between the teeth are wider. In extreme cases, this can lead to something called shark finning, where the teeth on cassettes or chain rings take on a pointed appearance, like a shark fin really. This is not good at all and can potentially be pretty dangerous, as I'll explain. What this means is that when you come to replace your old worn chain with a new one, the tighter tolerances between the rollers on the new chain won't mesh well at all with your worn teeth on your, on your old worn cassette. The shifting will be garbage. And when you put the power down, sometimes the chain can actually jump over teeth on the cassette. So not only will you have to get a new chain, but you'll have to get a new cassette as well. Okay, so my general rule is that a cassette should last you four or if you're lucky, maybe five chain replacements. But if you're always riding around with this black grinding paste all over your drive chain, it'll wear out your parts super quickly. And when you come to replace your chain, in 95% of cases, you'll probably have to get a new cassette on the back as well. And if you're riding something like a high-end group set, like Dura Ace or, or Altegra, those cassettes can be quite, they'd be big bucks, if you know what I'm saying. So. It's always worth keeping this black paste off your drive chain wherever you can. And with that in mind, let me show you what this ultrasonic puppy can deliver. So grab the chain. I always use quick release links to make chain removal easy and whip off the cassette. Stick them in the ultrasonic cleaner and cover them with some water. Then throw in a dash of degreaser, set the temperature, the time and hit go easy as that. While this is going, I usually wipe down the rest of my bike, but as you can see here, after only two minutes, the water is already black as it's lifting the grime from the chain and cassette. Then once you hear the beep to say it's done, grab the stuff out of the cleaner and rinse it off with some water. Sparkling clean chain and cassette every single time. So here are the before and after shots. You can really see the grime has been lifted and it's a pretty night and day difference, wouldn't you say? Okay, great. So amazing results super easy surely no one's got anything bad to say on the topic of ultrasonic cleaners so for whatever reason the topic of using an ultrasonic cleaner to clean your drive chain really gets people fired up online and from what i have read there are two main criticisms that are levied against using an ultrasonic cleaner in this way the first is that the solvents and degreasers that people use in these machines can supposedly strip off the anti-friction coating that's applied to chains and cassettes and leave them kind of with a pitted appearance. I've never run into any of these issues myself, but I'm quite sparing with the amount of degreaser that I use, because you don't really need much. I only leave them in the ultrasonic cleaner for about 20 minutes, because that's all you really need, to be honest with you and I always wash the parts that I take out really thoroughly with, with water to remove any of the cleaning solution. Maybe if you were to leave the, the bike parts in a really strong solution for hours on end, like overnight, for example, maybe you'd see some pitting. But the way I use my cleaner, I've never run into any issues like this. The second is that using an ultrasonic cleaner with a bike chain can strip out all of the factory lubricant from between the rollers of the chain and then it's allegedly very difficult to kind of relube your chain sufficiently and it won't roll the same again and it'll wear out really quickly. 
What I would say is that yes, it does absolutely strip all of the lubricant from the chain. I mean, this is fresh out of the cleaner and I can show you that, yeah, there's nothing on my hands. The chain is effectively surgically clean, but it's super easy to re-lubricate your chain. Just go roller to roller with your chosen lubricant, dab a little bit on each, and then bada bing, bada boom, your chain is brand spanking good as new. So yeah, do that and you will be golden and you won't run into any issues. So the main drawback is probably upfront cost. So I picked mine up about 18 months ago on eBay for about 65 pounds, but that was uh, on a promotion. I had a look earlier and ones very similar to mine now go for about 95 pounds. So it's not particularly cheap for a good one. You can get some smaller ones that are cheaper for about 40 pounds, but they're mainly designed to clean jewelry and they generally aren't powerful enough and don't really work on bike parts. So do a little bit of reading around before you buy one and make sure you get a decent one. Another drawback are the solvents and cleaners you need to use to kind of make the most of these machines. If your chain and your cassette aren't too dirty, you might get away with using dish soap, but in my experience, this doesn't actually work very well. The citric degreaser that I use can be pretty toxic. So if you're gonna use a strong solvent, you need to find a way to dispose of the waste cleaning solution responsibly. So that's another small drawback for you. But the benefits totally outweigh these drawbacks, in my opinion. So if you're like me and you live in a pokey little flat with no access to any outside space, these things are a godsend. So I don't really have the option of power washing my bike or hosing it down outside. So the ability for me to clean my entire drive chain in a little box is super, super convenient and, and really great if you're short on space like me. Also, if you ride your bike a lot and commute like I do, it makes life so much easier. I can basically deep clean my bike now, top to bottom, in 30 minutes. It really, really takes that pain out of cleaning your bike. And because it's so easy, it means that you do it a lot more often, which can only be a good thing. So once you've bought your ultrasonic cleaner, it's also super cheap to run it day to day. So this is the degreaser that I use. I've literally only just finished it in this video and I got this on eBay for £12 and you can get them for a similar price on Amazon too. And this has lasted me over a year. So yeah, super cheap to run once you've got them. But one of the biggest benefits is that I just don't have to buy as many replacement parts anymore because my drive chain is always clean now. My cassettes and my chains just last so much longer. And if you're running a high-end group set like a Dura Ace or an Altegra, you could probably look to save some big bucks on replacement parts. Um, but finally, one of the things I didn't kind of realize going into this is that a freshly cleaned drive chain is just a joy to ride. Your bike just feels really responsive. The, the gear changing is always nice and crisp. And because my drive chain is always a bit cleaner a lot more often now, I just get more enjoyment using my bike day to day. So yeah, there's that to think about as well. So I can wholeheartedly recommend that you go out and get one of these ultrasonic bad boys. I freaking love my one and I use it at least two or three times a month. But having said that, I know there are some cheaper homebrew alternatives that can get kind of similar results. But rather than go into detail around those here in this video, I've linked a video in the description by a guy called OzCycle, and he's got a fantastic channel, and that video details one of kind of my favorite methods for cleaning other than using the ultrasonic cleaner. So definitely go and check that one out below. And as always, I've put links for where to buy all the ultrasonic jazz I've featured in this video down there in the description too. Anyway, that is it for this video. So subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions or any comments about my ultrasonic cleaner or about ultrasonic cleaning in general, throw them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to as many of you as I can. Anyway, that is all for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Right, just quickly, one more thing worth mentioning that I didn't actually cover in the video is the topic of chain waxing, 
where you coat your chain in paraffin wax or a paraffin wax mixture. This is supposedly super low maintenance and you avoid the dreaded black gunk all over your drive chain. I have tried this once or twice in the past, but for me, just straight off the bat, the drive chain was too noisy. I really appreciate a nice quiet drive chain and the noise from a waxed one, it really put me off, to be honest with you. It could definitely be worth a revisit though, so let me know if this is something you'd like to see me cover uh, Yeah, in the comments and maybe I'll bang out a video on it. Oh, and this is footage from my commute the other day. Watch out for a person on the left run into the road without looking in three, two, one. True spatial awareness there. Amazing, amazing to see. Anyway, catch you guys later on.